Welcome to School Info App by the Instructional Technology Team. Throughout today's session, you're going to learn more about the School Info App, learn about how it will improve communication for our district, and get an opportunity to go in and modify settings and explore the School Info App for yourself. Before we jump into the platform, let's figure out why we are using School Info App in the first place. So basically, we just want to make communication simpler for the district and for our schools and to increase engagement between students, parents, and staff. School Info App will help us to do that because it is a content management system and a digital communication tool that makes communication much more simplified and manages communication with all audiences and it's a quick access to resources, tools, news, and information. You can use the School Info app anytime you want to share the same message across multiple channels. To log into School Info app, you want to go to admin.schoolinfoapp.com, put in your email address and your password, and this will bring up your School Info dashboard. If you notice in the middle, you have tiles that you can click on to get to any one of these different options. Or you can go over to the left-hand side and there's also the same thing in a navigation bar. So two ways to get to the same places. Whichever one is easier for you. If you go up to the top, you'll see that you are a part of EBR schools and then you will see the actual school that you are associated with. The last thing at the top will be your email address, which will bring up your profile. So if I click my email address, it brings up my profile, the ability to sign out, or any type of notifications that I might have. So I don't have any notifications yet, but if I had any, it will show up right here when I click on my email. If I click on profile, this is where I would go if I wanted to change my password, so I can click change password here, enter the current password, and then go in and change it to whatever I needed it to be. Then I would choose change password. If I had a school or a class Facebook page, I can connect it here by clicking this blue button. This is also where I would go if I had a school or a class Twitter page. I can click this and connect it to my profile. Also under settings, you would go here to set your conversation settings. So you can go here and hide yourself from conversations and also turn off unread conversation messages in an email. So just by checking, checking those boxes, this would change those conversation settings. And if you wanted to set your availability hours, you can go here and select the days and then input your times that you are available. So if you're available from eight to five, you would go in, click through and put your eight to five in by clicking on those buttons. Personal data is where you would go in and input any of your personal information. Your first and last name will already be there and most likely your email but you are able to go in and put change your image. So if you wanted to select a profile image, you would go here, select the image from your account, and then it will pop here. You can put your gender, any types of titles, employee ID, any of your contact information, such as your phone number, web page, any social media URLs, and the address to your school. We'll I'll go under your profile under personal data. Whenever you make any types of changes, just make sure you go down to the bottom and click that save changes button so that it will update your information. If you click identities, it will show you what your identities are. So most of you will be administrators and you should have an administrator identity. And if you click relationships, if you have any students in the district that will be tied to you like an actual child, it will be tied, it will be right here under any relationships. And then you can go ahead and click save changes. Next thing I want to show you 
is how to go in and start adding people to your site. So I clicked on home to get back to my home page and I'm gonna click on people here on my tiles or of course I can come over here and click on people in my navigation menu. This will show you all of the people that are associated with your site. You'll be able to see their username, app roles. You can even see the last time that they were logged in and you can send password reset instructions to them right here on this page. To add in people, we're just gonna go right here to this plus new to add one person. Or I can go up to the top and click import and I would import a bulk load of people at once. So if I click import, I would click right here to download an Excel file that Excel file will give me all of these different fields. I would have to make sure that I input their email address, their first name, last name, and any identities such as student, teacher, admin, staff, parent, so on and so forth. I would have to put in their identity. Once I put all of those things onto my Excel file that downloaded right down here, I will go and hide this and then drag that Excel file right here and it would load all of my teachers and staff and anybody else that I wanted to add into my school info app. I would hit continue after I made sure that my records were there, hit continue and then hit proceed. So once I have done So once I have uploaded all of my information, I can go ahead and hit continue. And then those teachers and administrators or anybody else that I put in would be listed right there on my site people. If I wanted to add in one person at a time, I would just hit this plus new. The only details right now that are required will be their first name and last name. I don't have to put any of their personal information. I can just start typing in their first and last name. Come over to my account tab. Add or create account. And then it will give me the op option to send them an invitation. And to send them an invitation, I would have to put in their email address. So if I start typing in an email address for the person, I would choose how I want their invitation to come to them. So I can send it right now, schedule it for later by clicking here and then choosing a date and time to send it. I could set the password for them if I wanted to, or I can leave it blank, or I couldn't. I can select no invite at all. Here, you want to make sure that you give that connected person some type of account. So you want to click here to add the account type. So you can either give them an admin role, a reporter role, reviewer role, or a teacher role. So if this is a teacher, I would click teacher. The site should be here, so you won't have to change your site because you would only have access to the site that you are an admin of, and you don't have to worry about app access because this is for the school info app, so you don't even have to worry about that new connection right there. But if you wanted to, you can hit add new connection. Make sure you're at the correct site, and make sure you click select the correct role. The next tab will be identities. And in this identities tab, you want to make sure that you give them the correct identity. Are they a staff, student, or a parent? So go ahead and give them staff identity. Make sure they're at the correct site again, and they are a teacher. And always when you are done, please don't forget to hit save because if you don't hit save, none of the information that you put in will be saved. Because this is a made up account, I'm gonna hit cancel, but you will make sure you hit save. 
Now I'm going to go back here and click on home and show you up the marketing tile. So if I click marketing, here you will see that you have some documents ready to go so that you can share your app with others. So there's a flyer here that you can click on to print and hand around campus. There's an infographic for your teachers to opt in. There's the press release and your app download infographic. Once you click on any one of these things, you can change the language by just dropping down this menu for English, French, or Spanish. You select your language and if I click this flyer, it's going to download to my files at the bottom and you will see that it automatically downloads with your school site on it. So since I was on Bernard Terrace's site, Bernard Terrace's flyer pops up. So it's already filled in for you. You just download it for your site. And close this. Same thing will go in for your teacher opt-in, same press release, and your app download. Whatever site you are on, it will automatically fill in your school information. You just need to click on download and then you can disseminate this information however you see fit. So now I'm going to go back home so that I can show you how you can start creating events to share with your parents and staff on your school calendar. So to get to your calendar and your events, you can either click here, features on the tiles, and then click on events, or come over to your navigation menu, and under features, find events. Either one will work. This will pull up your school calendar. So each school will automatically have their school calendar here loaded in their calendars. You can view it, move it, edit it, or even go in and delete it. If you have several calendars and you wanna create folders, you can go ahead and create a folder by clicking on the new folder tab at the top. To edit your calendar or add events to your calendar, you wanna click on the little eye to view it. This pulls up a month view of your calendar. You can click through, find the specific month and date that you want to add something to. If you want to view it in week view, you can view it like this. And you can even view it by days. So I'm going to go back to month and go down to the bottom and create an event. Here, I will go in and select my date. So clicking on my calendar, I can select the date that I want to add that event to. So I'll have my start date and hit set. And then my end date, if it's the same date, I can do the same date and set. I can even change the time. So you see here it's five o'clock and six o'clock was the default times. But if I wanted to change that, I'm gonna go back into my calendar and go down at the bottom and change my time. So if I wanted to start at three instead of five, I can hit that and hit set. Same thing for my end time. I need to give it a name. And I can even give it a specific location by clicking on add new and typing in the address of my location. So you would type in the address, give that location a name and you can even give it an image if you wanted to. So just fill in that information. If you don't wanna give it an address, you don't have to. The only thing you have to do is give it a name. That little star tells you what is a required field. Once you have that information in, go down to the bottom and click on save. After you have your location in, you can choose to ignore the location. You can have an all day event. So if you choose this, it will make that event last all day. So the start and end date times wouldn't matter. And you can even have it as an unpublished event. 
here is where you would type in your description of your event so if this is a practice you could type in everything you want to do about that practice they have a rich content editor here where you can bold and italicize and underline you can hyperlink things so insert a link to a website here you can insert an image a table if you click the plus and the three dots you will get more rich content editor options such as your special characters and your horizontal lines once you have everything typed in in your description if this is an event that reoccurs you would click here on your recurrence and decide when it repeats so you can have not repeat that would be your default the default is does not repeat you can have it repeat every day every week on friday all of these things you can go ahead and choose your recurrence and then you can even click here for customizable and choose the customizable recurrence by saying repeat every type in the number of days or even change it to weeks months or years then choose when you want that recurrence to stop by clicking on your calendar here and choosing the end date so if you want it to last for a complete year click here if you want to change that have it do it for several years you would just click through on your calendar and choose that date after you have your event all typed in everything that you need you're ready for it to go onto your calendar just click on save right here at the bottom and that event will be loading onto your school calendar at the top you see that you have some more buttons so you can export this calendar out somewhere else so if i hit export now that has downloaded to my device i see my event records right here i can import another calendar in so if i have a calendar saved somewhere i can import that into my events i can click on school calendar to switch calendar so if i had several calendars I can switch through by just clicking there I can look at all of my events as a list so all of the events will be listed here everything that will be on your calendar will list right here and I can go back to my calendar view and I can even print out this calendar if by clicking print and when I'm ready to get back to all of my calendars I just click back to calendars and it comes back to this screen so this is where you will go in to create new calendars or edit the events on your calendar. I will click back on home now. And now I'll show you how you can start creating news to share with your parents and staff and students. So if we click news here or here, this will bring up the ability to start creating news that you can share with your stakeholders. So if I hit create new, I'm able to come in and start composing a message. So any type of message that you would like to send out as news to your stakeholders, you can start typing it. So I'm just gonna put a test message here as my title and then type in this is a test. as my message i have the option to open this link in a browser so if i don't want them just to read it here if i had a link hyperlinked in i wanted to show them to go to another website i would hyperlink it and then i would choose to open it to in a new browser or they can open it right there in the app i can add attachments and i can also upload videos so once i have it the way that I want it to be. I can go up to the top and either continue so that I can post it or I can save it as a draft. If I click here at the top, I'm able to see all of my drafts. So I see I have two test messages. I can click on it to begin editing or I can go back to drafts and then delete it out. So if I delete it, it'll be gone and I can't go back in and edit anymore. If I wanted to start editing this one, I can go in and maybe this time I want to add in a link 
to Google. And I can have open in a new tab and I would just insert it. So now this is linked. I know that is linked because it has these options now where I can open it, edit it, or unlink it. And then I can go back here if I don't want to publish it and hit delete. And now that draft is gone. If I wanted to publish it, I would go ahead and hit continue. And it would give me that option to publish it to my app. If I click on my news settings, this is where I can go in and customize my news feed for the visibility and the frequency of all of my notifications. So if I go in right here and I click on categories, this is where I can edit my daily event alerts, my weekly event alerts, and I can also edit my Facebook alerts because this is what this school site has already set up as their news categories. So if I go here, I can hover over and show all subscribers to it. So as you can see, there's no subscribers, but once they start subscribing, I would see them in a list right here. I can go in and edit that. So if I click on edit, I'm able to change my image. So if I don't want this as my image, I can change it and even click on my library here. Click on iOS 7 because we want to make sure that we always keep it in iOS 7 when we're searching for icons and choose a different calendar. So if I choose a different calendar, I will select it here. And now that will be my new image that parents and subscribers would see. I could upload one from my device if I had one. And I can even change the name of it so it's not just event alerts daily. I can change it to whatever I would like it to be. Once I have all of my changes set up, I would just go down to the bottom and click apply so that those changes will be applied automatically to my app. If I wanted to add a new site category, I would just hit plus new. Same thing, if I wanted to select my image, click here, make sure I'm on iOS 7, search for my image, select it, and give it a name. And then go down to the bottom and click save and edit. Once I know that it's exactly the way I wanted it to be, I can pin it to a specific position on my app. Check off that it is a system category for the automated feed. Allow teachers to post news if I would like them to. And then go down to the bottom and press apply to change to save all of those changes and apply it to my app. I'm gonna delete it because I don't want it right now. And when I'm ready to go back to my settings, I would just hit back to settings. I can also set up feeds here in settings. So if I had any RSS feeds, such as a weather feed or a podcast feed, and I had the URL here, I would just go in and click plus new. I can have an internal name, put in that URL, test the connection out. I can limit my visibility if I don't want it to show forever so I can limit the visibility visibility create a news item create a push notification so that all app users would get a push notification from this feed ignore the time zone and only show the link on the body so once I have it all in I want to make sure that I click on save and edit of course I can also set up my Facebook feed my Twitter feed, Instagram feed. So if my school has any one of these social media sites, I can go in and add those feeds in. And I can also go in and edit my event alerts. 
So I can go here, I can choose to create news items, send push notifications, send a daily event alert on the preceding day, and limit the visibility of the days. Here's where I can go in and change when I want those alerts to send out. Can hide my site name, hide the calendar name, and even suspend the daily alert. The title preview will be here's what's happening today right now. And also for weekly alert settings, I will go in and change that. So I can change the visibility dates for my weekly alerts, change my time that it goes out, choose which day I would like it to send out on for the weekly alerts. And also the same thing, hide it, the site names, the calendar names, or suspend the weekly alert altogether. And I also can click right here. So if I don't want it to use every calendar that I have on file, I will click this checkbox and then actually select the calendars that I want my daily events to come from and my weekly events to come from. Once I have it all changed, remember I always have to come back down to the bottom and update my settings or save whatever it is. Once I'm done, I'm going to go back to settings. So the last thing on this is miscellaneous settings. So if I click here, I'm able to change the visibility that that alert shows for and I can have it the number is unlimited so I would just highlight it and type in whatever number of days I would like that visibility to show and just make sure that I go in and click on save voice dial text and email is not available for EBR so we won't go over that I'm gonna go back to home now and before I move on with the actual features, with all of the features that we have to start creating our app, I want to point out that you see right here that you can contact a staff member at any time for technical and content support. So if at any time you want to, you have a question and you want to reach out to someone immediately, if you click right here, you can send an email for Alex and even attach files are down at the bottom you can see if they are online so if you click we're online let's check you can enter your email address right here and your name and then start typing in your message and press enter Alex will be there or someone will be there to chat with you immediately and answer whatever question you have So now let's get into some of the features and adding in things to your app builder so that you can build out your app. So the first thing I want to click on is documents. So over here we can click on features and documents or we can click on our tile features and scroll down to documents. From here you can add any document that you want to. So Right now you can see that this school does not have any documents, but if I hit plus new, I can begin to upload my documents. So we have your file upload here. You can click to select the file or if you have it where you can just drag and drop it. So I'm gonna click file upload, find that file so I can go scroll through, find the file that I wanna upload, click on open. That file will load right here. I can go in and select an image. Remember, we always want to keep it on iOS 7. Find an image that goes along with my document. Give my file a name. So I'm going to stick with the theme that I've been sticking with and type in test. I can give it a description, pin it to a specific position, or even um published so keep it unpublished by clicking this checkbox once my file is all loaded in now you see it's here you'll have your little image at the top knowing that your file is there 
and you're ready to upload it you would just go ahead and click save and edit and now that file is there if I wanted to apply it to my documents I would click apply or I could go in and delete it if I don't want it to stay if I have several documents and I want to keep them organized as always I can create a folder here at the top click a new folder select my image for my folder give my folder a name pin it to a specific position keep it unpublished or put it on the website only we would never check this because EBR does not have the website so we won't worry about the website only and then I will just go down to the bottom well over to the side and click on OK so now my test folder is created I'm able to go in move it around edit it or delete it so if I want to edit this folder I will go in and edit it if I want to change the name maybe change the image and any documents that I want to add in for this particular folder I would just go down to the bottom and click my plus new and start adding in that those documents for my test folder I can even go to the top and click import and drag and drop files from my device here and then start uploading them so I would drag and drop or click and it would open up all of my device all of my files choose the one that I want to click start uploading and then all of those files will be dropped into this folder I'm ready to get out of that folder I can just click OK here come back here if I don't want to keep it anymore so I'm going to go ahead and delete this folder so it's not in the school's folders and then I can go back down to the bottom and start adding in my other documents examples of things you might want to include as a document maybe flyers for your school any type of PDF that you want your parents and students and staff to download anything that you would like your stakeholders to see and download you want to go ahead and put it in documents for things that you don't want them to be able to download that will be considered an info page so I can come over here click on info page and I can start creating any of my information pages so a bill schedule maybe you want to keep that as an info page stakeholders would not be able to go in and download those pages but you can go in and move them edit or delete them so if I want to click on edit now I'll see that the bell schedule is created here as an info page it will pop up on the app just like this I can change my image change the name of it go in and change the background color if I wanted to and then go down and apply any of my changes to create a new info page same as before just click click plus new add my image if I would like it give it a name change my background color I can open my link choose to open the links in external browser choose to make it unpublished and then go in and start typing in my info so here something has to be in this box you can't leave this box blank you have to put your information here and if you have a PDF or a picture you can go in and upload it right here by clicking on insert image and you can upload your image from your computer or link it with the URL and you can also type whatever information you would like to put in right here again the plus and the three dots will give you the special characters and that horizontal line if you wanted to put in dividers once you have everything the way you want it to be make sure you click on save and edit at the bottom or it won't save 
So now we're going to go back to home and I'm going to show you how you can insert quick links. So maybe you want a place where your students and parents and teachers can go in and find a URL very quickly. So maybe your menus or your football schedules or just a website that you go to frequently. You want to put that in as a quick link. So we can go here to features again and then scroll down to quick links. Remember, these are always here on your left panel as well. So this school already has their athletics, clever menus, online school payments, and the student progress center as quick links. And if they wanted to go in and delete any of these, they would just hover over this little trash can to delete it. They can move it. So if you hit move, you can move it to a new folder if you wanted to. And you can also go in and edit. So if I click the pencil to edit, I can change the image that they have selected here. I can change the title. Can add a subtitle. If the URL was wrong, I can go in and change the URL. And of course, as always, I can choose to open it in an external browser or have it unpublished. Once I've done all of my changes, I would just go down to this green button and click apply. If I wanted to add a new quick link, I'm just going to go here to my plus new. Select my image. Remember, we always want to keep it on iOS 7. So I would search here. Give it a name. So maybe I just wanted the football schedule. I can add a subtitle if needed. Type in my URL. and then choose to have it open in an external browser or keep it unpublished. Once I've put all of my changes in, I will go down to the bottom and click save and edit. Here you, they will tell you if that URL is valid or invalid. So I typed in a, a URL that is invalid. I would have to go in and correct it before I can click on save and edit. So make sure that you have your URL type in correctly with HTTPS and your slashes front or it won't, it won't accept that as a valid URL. So now it's valid. I can go down and press save and edit or I can press OK to go ahead and save it. If I had several quick links and I wanted to put them into a folder I can come here and click on new folder and the same as before I would choose my image by selecting my image here or uploading one give the folder a name and then come over and press OK so folders are pretty much the same across the different icons that we have here the next feature that I would like to point out is over here where we see forms so forms are really cool because they are fillable forms that you can go in as an administrator or as a teacher, create them and send them out so that parents can fill them out. So no more papers to send home. They can fill out your forms right here on the app. So to create a new form, I'm going to go to forms, click on plus new, and then begin creating the form. Same thing applies. Select my image here, either from the library or upload it, and give my form a name. So I'm going to say permission slip because those are forms that we often need to send home. I can put a custom message after my submission. So if I want to say thank you, for submitting. Can pin it to a particular position on my app. Provide my users with a confirmation number. If I can select this, if I don't want to collect the IP addresses with the responses. And again, if I want to keep it unpublished, I would check here. Signature and exports mean that you can get a link. So I can choose a link and I would actually see the signature when I export my files out. 
or I can just see true or false to know that they did sign it. So you can actually have your parents sign your forms. And if you choose this, it will just tell you, yes, they signed, true, they signed, false, they didn't. Or I can get a link to actually see their signature. I can have my dynamic form, recipient types are classic, and then I can add who I want to send my responses to. So I can start typing in an email address so, so that this person will receive the form whenever the parents fill them out. And I'm gonna come over to the right side and start typing out my description of my form. I can have a response email header. So if I wanted a header at the top, maybe my school logo, I can go in, insert my image right here, or I can type out a header. And I can also put an email footer for the response. Same thing, I can insert an image or I can type out what I wanted to say. After I have it all done, I'm gonna go down to the bottom and click OK. Now this permission slip form has been created. If parents had started filling it out, I can view the responses by clicking this button. Go to the form builder to build it out more because right now it's only the header and the footer. I can move it to a folder, edit my header, footer, description, or the title by going here. Or duplicate this form if I wanna create a new form that's similar to it. Or of course I can delete it. I want to go in and build my form out because right now it only is the description and the header. So I'm going to hit form builder. This brings up all of the components for my form. So you see here I can start adding pages. So right now it's only one page. But if I wanted two pages I would just click here and have two pages. Or I can go in and remove that page by doing that and I can start putting in the components of it. So we have all of these different components. They're pretty much um, self-explanatory, but we're gonna put some of them in so that you can see some examples. So an input field means that they would input something into it. So we wanna make sure that it has a label and not keep it untitled. So I'm gonna put my input field as name here. If you wanted to put in the description of the form, you could, I mean, of this input field, you could. Pre-fill with user data, you can choose this. Make it required by choosing this. And keep your value in it after they submit. So if you want them to keep that same value, if it's something that you know they're gonna be doing over and over again, you can keep the value after they submit it. So the next time they come to it and they have to input a name, the name will still be there. After I have everything that I wanted, I'm gonna go here and put my check. So you see it has the little star, this is required. Fill in the blank. If you have a, something that you want them to fill in, you could choose a fill in the blank. Radio buttons are really great. There's like multiple choice. So I'm gonna choose a radio button now. Give my radio button a title. So my title is gonna be grade level. Don't need a description because that's pretty self-explanatory and I'm gonna make sure that it's required. And now I'm gonna start putting in my options. So my first option is gonna be kindergarten. And then I'll add my next one, first grade. I'm gonna hit my plus and add the next one, second grade. And my last one will be third. And go ahead and add it. If I wanted an other option, I can choose this and other will pop up. So now the parents will go in and choose one of those grade levels. I made that required as well and then I will hit okay. Address will be them inputting an address in. Paragraph will be if they needed to put input something that was longer than just like a, a simple name. Check boxes, they can select multiple levels. 
So here, grade level, I would probably keep that as a radio button because your child could not be in more than one grade. But if they had an option where it would be something they could choose more than one, I would use check boxes. I can have a drop down menu and I can even have a place where they can go in and attach something to the form. The best thing I think about this is the signature. So I'm gonna go ahead and put signature and say please sign. Hello. Make that required as well and hit my checkbox for okay. And this will be my permission slip. I can go here and do a live preview so I can see exactly how it will look on the phone when the parents go to it. They'll see that this is a permission slip and hit continue to the form. I can type in their name, type in the check the grade level, and then they can actually sign by just moving their finger across the screen. Once they're done, they would hit submit. That form would say thank you for submitting because I put in that form response. And when I want to go back to my form or get off of the preview, I'm just going to hit the power button right here. And I think my form is good. Now I can go back, back to forms. Same thing, view the responses. Continue building onto my form or I'm just going to delete it because this one is was just a practice. So now that we have input all of this information into our features, now we want to actually start building out our app. So we go down on our menu to App Builder. This will show you exactly how your app will look. Remember, we can always go to the top and see my live preview. So this is what parents would see when they log in, our staff, our students. And I can get out of my live preview by clicking this little button. Here, I can go in and add different images. So every school will have a pre-made image here. But if you wanted to add in more, just go up to the top, click Add and start adding in your new image so that you can see like a slideshow. And at the top of your screen, you can click through and see different pictures. Here, each image will need a name. You can make it clickable so they can click through if you had several different pictures. If you wanted tickering text to go across, you can type it in here. And if you only wanted this image to show for a particular amount of time, you can choose your calendar here and choose the dates from your visible from, and then choose when you want it to stop showing with the visible to. Remember, you can click through with your arrows right here at the top. And you can also set how many seconds you want that one image to show. Because you only have one image, of course, it's going to show indefinitely. But if you have more than one, you can choose how many seconds you wanted that one image to show by just clicking on your arrows here and changing it. Or if you don't like it at all, you can go ahead and click delete. Next is our menu builder. So on the menu builder, you see all of the menu items that you have for your, for your school. So again, let's go to live preview. You can see just like it is here, this is the order that parents and staff and students will see it in. So if I wanna change the order of any of these things, maybe I want my forms to come before the events, I can move my forms up or I can move it back down to where it was. I can hit the X to delete forms completely out if I don't want forms to show right now. I have my tools down at the bottom and I also have the alerts that I can go in and change. If I wanted to add a brand new section, I will come down here and click add section, give that section a name and call it parent corner. I scroll down you'll see that my new item parent corner is here and my new section is also down here so I can go in like I told you before if I don't want it I can delete it out and if I don't want this parent corner here 
I'm going to delete it as well. Once I have all of my things the way that I want them to be, I can go in, click save, and all of my changes will be saved. The toolbar is what you'll see at the bottom of your screen. So again, let's go to live preview. If you look right down here, they have the phone and then they have the web address and that's it. So if I wanted to edit the phone number, I would just click on that phone, change my phone number right down here. I can change the function of what's gonna happen. Of course, I wanna keep it on call because it is a phone number. And then here for the web address, it is the school's website. I can choose to open it in an external app if I don't want them to open it right there on that app. My function is a link because it's gonna take them to a website. And if I wanted to change the picture, I could just hover over here, go to my library, or hit upload. If I wanted to add a new item, I can go here and add my new item. So I can add an item, come over to my iOS settings, Maybe this time I don't want it to just be a phone number app and the website. Now I want them to have a weather app. So I'll do weather. Choose my image. Give it a label. Give it a function. So this time I want my function to be a link to take them to the weather channel. Keep it open in an external app or I can keep it as it is and then when I'm all done I'll hit save so now that image is there that item is there but if I don't want it to be there anymore I would just hover over it click my X and now it's gone site images each school will have a site image which will be their logo already uploaded for them if you wanted to upload more, you would just go down here to submit a new icon. And last, the theme builder. Each school will already have a theme built in with their particular school's colors. So you don't need to change this unless you want to. It would already be set up for you on default. Remember, you can always go to the top to see how your app looks and you can kind of click through it and it'll bring you exactly to what you have set up. I'm gonna go back to home now. Again, remember you can always come here to the help section. So if you need any on the spot help, Alex is great for replying very, very, very quickly. If you click right there, just send him an email or just go down to the bottom and chat with someone right now by entering in your name and your email address and whatever your question is we will be having more trainings in the future but this was just a quick overview of the things that you can do with your admin site of school info app